What's going on guys? Mike with Benchmark Supply and today we're going over the basics of GPS in the construction and surveying industry. We're going to break down what GNSS is, the differences between that and GPS, um, basin rovers, network rovers, and then a little bit of facts too that you should know um, before making a purchase and considering a couple of different options. So first things first is what is GNSS? All right, and that stands for Global Navigational Satellite Systems. And here's the thing. A lot of people just say GPS, and what's the difference? And really, GPS is a satellite network of GNSS. It's almost became the brand of Kleenex and Band-Aid, right? And how now that is the universal term. So you have GPS, which is the United States. You also have GLONASS, which is for Russia. You have Galileo, which is from the European Union. And then Badu, which is from China. And there's more than that as well. Um, QZSS is from Japan and so forth and so forth. And when you use these GNSS receivers, they actually piggyback off of all of these different networks. Um, reason being is that the more satellites, the better connectivity and the better accuracy. So again, modern day GPS systems, really GNSS systems, use all the different satellite networks to give you the best connectivity. All right, so now how is GNSS used in the surveying and construction industry? And what we do is we take your positioning and we turn that into actionable data. So some examples are site topographic and as-built surveys, line work and utility layout, building pad and foundation layout, pipe runs and utility installation, slope verification and grading, curb and gutter layout, cut and fill analysis and progress tracking. These all take position and turn that into actionable data. So there's really two major setups for GNSS systems. You have a basin rover or you just have a network rover only. And I'm going to give you a fact before we jump into those two. GNSS alone will only give you an accuracy of one to five meters, three to 15 feet, right? With RTK corrections, and that comes from your base station or the network of base stations you tap into, that's how you get it down to one to two centimeters, which is an absolute must for the construction and surveying industry. So just note that that's why that base station is so important. It sends over the real-time corrections. In essence, it's the tether and the earth that allows these satellite systems to get you the accuracy and reliability you need. So now that you know that, let's go over the base and rover. So a base station is a setup on a known point and sends the corrections to the rover. So as you roll around the job site, you know, you know you can ensure that you're accurate with that rover. This is the most common setup in the United States, um, especially on job sites without reliable cell coverage. Let me say that again. If you do not have cell service, you will need a base station. That is going to be the one downfall of the network rovers, which we'll go over in a second. But in my personal opinion, I actually always like the base and rover setup. You own your own equipment. You'll learn how to set up a base station, which takes 20, 30 minutes, tops. And if you're actually at a job site with, you know, for four to six weeks, you could set it up um, what's called on a, on a base pole. And it'll be kind of off on a little bit on the job site so that no one can touch it. And then once it's set up once, you, you don't have to do it every day. You do it once for the job site and then you're good to go. Um, so that's what we see a lot on like four to six week plus projects. Um, <clears throat> so moving on over to the network rovers. A network rover, there's no base station needed on site. You connect to a network of fixed base stations via cellular signal to receive those real time corrections. Now again, you need cell phone service. And on top of that, you will probably need to pay a subscription fee uh, to access either the public or the private networks. Um, you might have heard of Trimble VRS Now, TopNet Live by TopCon, um, even the DOTs, Florida, New York, they have their own networks. So, <clears throat> you know, you have to do some research to make sure that A, you have coverage in your area, it's reliable, um, and you do have good cell service. You know, the one advantage I do see of this is it's A, cheaper, you don't have to upfront pay the additional cost of a base station. Um, and you also don't have to worry about someone stealing your equipment, which could come in handy, you know, if you're working very urban environments. Um, but just note this, is that the subscription fees, eventually over the course of a few years, will equate to the same cost as a base station. 
So in my personal opinion, it's better to just buy the base station because A, you own your equipment, you don't have a subscription fee, and you can operate if cell service is non-existent, especially if you're in the mountains, um, you know, that, that comes in extraordinarily handy. So just, just note that, all right? So now that you know the difference between the base and the rover and the network rovers only, uh, let's go over UHF versus 900 megahertz frequencies. Um, and in today's day and age, UHF is by far most popular now because it has much more flexibility for the future. It integrates with multiple other UHF systems where the 900 megahertz frequencies don't, right? So 900 is typically used because in the past it had better penetration and further range. Um, but with modern technology, what we see is you just increase the wattage of the radios. So they typically go from one watt to five watt. So, you know, if you're using a base station, you'll probably use two to five watt radio inside there, and that will give you miles of, of connectivity. So you, you, realistically, 900 is becoming a little bit of an outdated system, and, you know, they only play with one another, right? So Topcon 900 will only play with Topcon systems, and Trimbles will only play with Trimbles, and it just is very limiting, and it puts what we call the handcuffs on you. So if you wanna, you know, ensure that as you grow and upgrade, Throughout the years, a UHF system will give you much more flexibility for the future. So really this is just the basics of GPS, uh, nope, not GPS, GNSS systems in the construction and surveying industry. And look, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, give us a buzz at Benchmark and we'd be happy to get you.